Monkey Island, just the mere mention of the name to a gamer of a certain age, will conjure up memories of a misspent youth, sat in bed on the Amiga with the sound turned down so mum and dad don't wake up till 3 o'clock in the morning on a school night. What the hell? What's going on? The resurgence of the point and click genre is much down to the mobile and handheld markets, and it's a welcome one indeed, especially if classics such as Monkey Island are going to be remade with such care and attention. It's great that you can switch between classic monkey and the new monkey. It's like removing the rose tinted glasses of how you remember it to reveal how basic the old Amiga graphics were. But the gameplay was and is as fun as ever and for those new to the genre or those just after a touch of nostalgia I can't recommend it enough. Let's just hope Day of the Tentacle is the next game for a high def revamp. Hey, uh, how's the student at? Stu? How gauche? We only serve gourmet chilled soups here. In fact, our new cook has been working all day on a very special Vichy Soise. Let me go see how he's doing. How's the Vichy Soise, Bernard? Excellent, sir. Won't you have a taste? Oh, I think I will. Oh my god! What kind of demented recipe book are you using? <laughs> You're fired! But, sir... Out! Get out of my sight! This is the most disgusting, filthy mess I've ever seen in my life! Look at all the hair! And what's this stuff? How am I ever gonna get rid of this junk? Well, here's your soap. This is a trailer for the re-release of GoldenEye 007 for the Wii. Rare's multiplayer-defining first-person shooter is considered a classic on the old Nintendo 64, and I, for one, am looking forward to playing this again. Although it doesn't look like there's no Sean Bean in it. This game allows you to feel total immersion in the GoldenEye universe. Please, sir. Stop there. You were looking through Bond's eyes all the time. Thank you, sir. You really feel like a secret agent when you work through the environments. You can decide, do I take a covert? <laughs> or do I go for an all-out firefight? We've been working a lot on the AI of this game uh, to make your antagonists more human. You let your friend die. Now it's your turn. The other thing I'm really proud of in this game is we've employed a lot of Bond veterans. Rob Cowper, who's a, a Hollywood set designer, uh, he comes from a, an architectural background. Essentially, we wanted to update the game and the environments. So it's a coffee's nightclub, we wanted it to be contemporary. The flavour is very high-tech, very slick. We decided to make it a solar park as the finale of the GoldenEye game to bring up to date. There's opportunity there to have more of a treacherous fight on top of something that's, that's uh, so far up in the sky. Come on, jump! I think it will blow away anything that you've ever seen first-person shooter-wise in the week. Nice work, Jay. And speaking of Bond... Bond here. 007, this is urgent. For some mission-critical biotechnology for our defense forces. One of their senior researchers went missing. We received a tip that he's alive and about to sell that research to a buyer in Istanbul. When you arrive in Istanbul, do whatever you have to, by any means necessary.
Never in my life have I played a less sandboxy sandbox game than Mafia 2. The title promises much with its sprawling historical setting of Empire Bay and interpretation of New York City, but its exploration will never really extend too much beyond the storyline that the game sets out for you. Even if you try to do other things, the game pretty much throws it back in your face and tells you to go home. Come back some other time. I'm busy. Each mission is usually one of three variables, involving either a shootout, a fist fight, or some sneaking around. Mostly it's just shootouts, and gone are the context-based kills and reputation building of the first game. The cover system is adequate, there is a good choice of weaponry, but the AI is a bit poor, with enemies not tending to try and flank you too much. So it all sounds fairly bog standard so far then. And on the surface of it, you'd probably be right. But what sets this game apart for me? is that as one of the most absorbing storylines and convincing characters that I have ever played. Damn it, Henry, I'm your friend here. I do the same thing for you and you know it. This has nothing to do with friendship, Vito. This is business. And if I screw up, I'm done. I can't let him go. I took a contract and I gotta finish the job. Without wanting to spoil it too much for you, the setting spans two decades as drafted soldier Vito Scaletti gets out the army to join childhood friend Joe Barbaro in a life of crime as they racket, robbed and kill their way into the higher echelons of the Mafia. Not sounding like the most likeable fellas so far. The way the characters interact and take the piss out of each other really enamours you to them in a way that very few games have ever achieved. Who the hell was that? Guy's got a voice like Woody fucking Woodpecker. That was Marty. Ah, fuck! The sprinklers are going off! Really? I go the spring. They teach wise ass. I can't see a damn thing through all this water. It's expertly paced too, with an hectic opening leading to a much slower intro to the characters and the snow-covered world in which they live in. Now, I have no footage of this, because my Mafia 2 disc is stuck in a broken PS3, which is now on its way to Sony. So all my footage is from the latter part of the game, which is set in the sunny 50s, which is a stroke of genius, by the way, when that first happens. The game really has a sense of romanticism about the time period that the game passes through with the excellent art direction and soundtrack adding to the game's immersiveness. So it sounds like it's all wonderful then. Well, it almost is, but it's all over so quickly. I'd say an half-dedicated player could clock this game in three or four days. And when it's finished, it's not like there's anything else you can do except replay it on an harder setting and try and find all the collectibles. And this in a world that promises so much. It's almost as if the developer had a grand vision for a much, much bigger experience and then at some point, either due to budget or time restrictions, they decided to focus all of their efforts into the storyline missions. The game just screams downloadable content, which does, after forking out 40 quid on release, will feel to most like a bit of a rip-off. But in spite of the game's fairly ordinary gameplay mechanics and misogynistic leanings, it's an extremely rewarding experience that if you can afford it, or you're patient enough to wait for the price to come down, I can heartily recommend. Well, that's all we've got time for this week, but please keep an eye on GamingGents.com for more regular updates. And if there's anything you'd like to get in touch with us about, then please don't hesitate to email us at neiljones at GamingGents.com. The next fresh episode will be Monday the 4th of October. But until then, ta-ta for now, and I'll leave you with some more sword action. Huzzah!